Hi, my name is Björn Fritz and this is the story of me riding through the southern parts of Sweden in the summer of 2023. This is my bike, a gravel bike, and this is me. I'm a 57 year old art historian. I'm in decent shape but by no means an athlete. I live in Malmö so I started there. This was my planned route. 21 days on a bicycle, about 100 kilometers per day. It's June 22nd, it's time to go from Malmö. My back is packed, I've got everything I need for three weeks out on the Swedish trail and a lot of other bike trails. Let's see how this goes. Next goal is Kifansta. And so this is biking in Skåne, it's very flat. I just got out from Lund, so I've done my regular to work commute and I'm off to roads where I haven't gone so very often. As you can see, it's high summer, everything is drying up. It's a bit of a problem for everyone around here, but not for me. I've got the wind in my back and plenty of water and nice bicycle lane to go in all the way it seems. Krifansta is the town where I grew up. I know it very well. On my way out from the city I stopped by my father's grave remembering that it was he who taught me how to ride a bike a little bit more than 50 years ago. So this is today's destination at my sister's place, just a little bit outside of Krifansta. Almost 120 kilometers today, but it was easy riding. I had the wind in my back almost all the time. The weather was nice though, a bit warm. And now I'm getting dinner. Good morning. I'm on my way from Balsti B to Svengsta after having slept at my sister's place. Got a late start at 10 o'clock because it's very nice to have a shower, a nice breakfast in a nice garden, uh, and generally having a very, very relaxing evening and morning. But I only have 75 kilometers today. Uh, a nice thing about riding your bike is that you see the small odd monuments. So this is a marker for the place where Ello Smith was born in late 19th century. He started distilling alcohol in a company that became Absolute Vodka. So now I'm in Bromella. My bike is with me. And this is the dinosaur fountain, which was such a wonder when I was a small boy. I really love this fountain. It was the only dinosaurs I could see. And this means I'm in Bromella, which I will be leaving very shortly. Everything's closed down, so I'm not getting my dinner here. It's Midsummer's Eve, so no big wonder in that. And it also means that my adventure begins. Uh, On the first few days of this bike trip, there was a lot of bike trails that were former railway tracks. So as you can see it is very flat and very straight and this is going into an old tunnel that I've seen from a car window as a kid many many times and been fascinated by and this was the first time I got a chance to ride through it. Great! Yes. 
here I have left Skåne and I'm a bit into Blekinge and I'm setting up my camp at a camping site on the Blekinge trail which is a walking trail. I had all the equipment I needed before I started planning this bike tour except the bike and some clothes because I've done quite a lot of hiking and this tent is serious overkill for summer hiking but it's the only tent I have. my bike, half unpacked, got a little bit of unpacking to do, sleeping bags and such, a simple hammock that I just have to sit in and rest in, and my tent, which is my fairly beloved Hilleberg Anjan 2, which is a nice and roomy tent for one person and fully possible to sleep two in. It's there's nothing in it at the moment. I've got the rest of the camp over there if anyone would join me. I hope I can spend the night here alone. I prefer to be alone. And I've got some water and my clothes are drying. Yep. Just like you normally do. The third day of my trip began early. I was going from Svengstad to Osnen. Uh, quite a bit to go. I did get a visitor in my camp. He arrived late at night and he went directly to sleep and he wasn't awake when I left. He came by car and I have no idea who that was. So there was another person there on Midsummer's Eve and this is Midsummer's Day and those are big holidays in Sweden so most things are closed but I do hope I can find an open pizza store at least to get lunch. I did find pizza, a pretty decent one, in Ryd, which I've just left. Ryd looks like any other little Swedish city. Uh, not much to show there. I'm back on the trail. I did replan when I saw some strange decisions I made home at the computer, looking at maps. This trail, which is asphalt, uh, old railway mostly through the forest which is nice lots of shade lots of birds and very easy paving to go on so I'm glad I replanned that otherwise it would be in country road which is asphalt with a lot of cars so this was the better choice <laughs> ah, today is a good day short ride lovely weather Gorgeous path and pizza. Over there. So, this is me on my third day of this trip. I just had a short run today, uh, 50 kilometers to this Lake Orsland that is in front of me. You can't see it, I'll cut to some images, I think. Uh, it's a camping ground, it's a very Swedish camping ground. There are very few tents and I'm the only one going by bike, everyone else is by car. And there's a lot of house cars and a few caravans, I think, not many at all. And there are some really, really big house cars as well, mobile homes. Um, most people seem to have settled in for, to stay here for a week or two. They have built up their own little gardens with stuff. I just build my camp in a few, like 30 minutes and I can have a close line here from my bike and I can dry some clothes on it and I got my tent behind me and I'm gonna cook dinner. So nothing at all spectacular for dinner today, just some soup and sandwiches. But I'll be going into Alvesta, which is one of the biggest cities I've passed by, so I'm hoping to get dinner there tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a long day, uh, 100 kilometers, so I 
have to get going a bit early. I hope that will work out. I feel very rested after two easier days. Uh, so it will be an early night this night. This is a night, nice camping ground. It's called Mjölknabben. It has got a nice cafe with a lot of cookies. They could do some more sandwiches. There were a few. Um, they could have done hamburgers or pizza, but no, everything they do seems to be made on site. Uh, which is nice. It's very nice. Except the coffee. The coffee was from a machine. I never understand that. Um, anyway, I'm just rambling on. Uh, I'm signing off here. Today it's uh, soon 6 o'clock in the evening. I will go to bed before 8 so I get an early start tomorrow because it's going to be hot again. So this is the fourth day. I've been riding for a little over an hour, about 20 kilometers of today's 100 kilometers ride. I got a very early start out of camp, or oh, not very, at about 8.30, so I could do a bit of riding before the heat sets in today. Right now I'm just resting for a short while here. Uh, the lake you see behind me is Orsnen, and this is actually a very small hilltop, or what you say, Ors in Swedish, with a lot of graves from Swedish Iron Age. So all the stones you can see standing up here is part of uh, grave ships. So that would have been visible from the water, so that water was a trading route. Back somewhere between 500 to 1000 uh, in our time. Common era. So other people have traveled here before and more people will travel later. So I'm going on this road. It's a small, nice road. It's very easy to bike on. It's not very hilly. It's not very windy, but it's going to be a hot day. So I hope I find somewhere to eat in Alvestar in a few hours. So I'm here in Ramkvilla. It was a decent ride. Um, quite a few hilly parts. Um, they were tough when it was very warm. When the sun went in, was hidden behind the clouds, it was a lot easier. I had to walk 20 meters or something when it became too hilly up to a church. So tomorrow I planned on uh, sleeping in the woods because I couldn't find another way. Now I've booked a room on a perhaps sketchy bed and breakfast. They exist on a lot of places, social medias. So I booked through booking.com. I don't get any confirmation in the email, but I have very aggressive spam filtering up, so that might be the reason. I can't call them, they won't answer the phone. Uh, there has been no money from my taken from my account yet. So <laughs> remains to be seen if I have a room tomorrow, a cheap one at 700 Swedish krona, including breakfast, um, or if I still have to do some camping in the woods, <laughs> which is approximately the place where I was supposed to be. I replanned a bit and I'm using Komoot, so replanning is very simple. I can't recommend that app highly enough. It's really a good help for this. So this night I'm hiking 
staying at a golf golf course. That's the golf course behind me. Uh, with a view over a lake, and as you can hear, a lot of kids still bathing this late hour. I will so soon go to bed. This is a very peaceful place in Ramkvilla, and it was cheap. 120 Swedish krona for an overnight stay with a tent. So, once again, I'm packed up and ready to go. Uh, I've replanned my route, as I said, so it will be somewhat shorter. At the end of it, I have to go on a bigger road and I try to avoid those. I hope it's okay because tomorrow I will need to go on that road for about 10 kilometers or do a 20 kilometer detour, an extra 20 kilometers or 30 kilometer detour. And I hope to avoid that. It's a very hot day today. It's something between 27 and 28 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, and it's uh, small lands, so there are a lot of hills. So it's uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill all the time. Uh, you just have to cope with it. And the only way to do that is by taking frequent breaks. Uh, usually when I'm out riding my bike for just one day, I'm terrible at doing that. But here I'm learning it very fast. So I stopped by a small convenience store, bought a soda to drink and some ice cream and relax in the shares they thankfully have placed outside the shop under a big oak tree um, and having a good time. This day offered great roads, great views and a lovely weather. I was on my way to Viserup, I would have coffee and at the coffee shop I met a couple from this little village called Nye and we sat talking about bicycling in Sweden for quite some time. Central Konditoriet in Viserum was a really nice coffee shop, I only have some stills and it was inexpensive. Do stay there if you can. Kind of exciting, there's a lot of thunder and there's a wind blowing up and I've got 16 kilometers till my goal for today. <laughs> Will I get wet? Who knows? So the rain did come. I rode about five kilometers in this downpour. The rain jacket helps a bit. But now I've stayed in a bus shelter where I will wait. For this to pass. This is not my favorite type of road, there's a lot of heavy traffic. And the rain pouring down doesn't make me any fun the road. Uh, anyway, I've got like six to seven kilometers left until I'm at my goal today, so I'll just wait here and see what happens. It will stop raining soon enough. It's so the bed and breakfast I have booked existed and they got my booking through booking.com though I didn't get any confirmation probably because of my email rules at my computer at home I don't know it worked out uh, slightly more expensive than announced on booking so a thousand Swedish krona per night it's in the higher range but okay, especially considering that I'm getting in from the wet and I can do my laundry here, which is great. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be another wet day. Uh, seems like the uh, heavy rain is going south and I'm going north. So hopefully I won't be getting all of it. I did consider staying here for an extra night, but no, I don't want to mess up my travel plans like that. I have uh, room bookings in Stockholm that I want to keep. So 
I will be riding in rain tomorrow. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, the road I'm going on for the first 10 kilometers tomorrow is just as awful as the one I was caught in the rain on today. Uh, just a road, no wide margins to ride a bike in. Lots of uh, heavy traffic at times, not as bad as some other roads. Uh, but it's 10 kilometers. I will be able to do that in about 40 minutes. And it will be the first thing I do in the morning, so I will be no, awake <laughs> and at an, in a good mood. And it won't be raining and it won't be excessively warm. A friend warned me over Facebook that that piece of a road could be very, very warm. Uh, now I'm going to go to a local grocery and buy something to eat for dinner tonight because I have a full kitchen to use here while my laundry is being laundered. And then I'm going to sleep in a bed. A big bed for one person. Great. So this was my original plan as done at home by the computer. What I did want to avoid today was this part here where we're going by Sverigeleden and originally I thought I would be camping in the woods here instead of staying at Karlösa. Uh, and going by Sverigeleden I would avoid Hulsfred or miss Hulsfred and go straight up to Vimmerby. So this detour is 20 km longer than if I remove this one and just get this straight line going up. So I wanted to do that because of bad weather and because I've had a hard day the day before. Now the trouble was here because this piece of road, which is marked as an 80 route in Komoot, turned out to be a 100 km per hour road, uh, mid-fencing, wire, separate uh, lanes, high traffic, lots of heavy traffic, and I did not want to go there at all. So I knew that as soon as I saw it. So instead I ended up planning going on these small roads here, so I added this road, and I added this road, which is just a small uh, logging road, and then I had to go over the street and into this road and then I could find some hiking paths that would lead me up to here approximately and I could go on like that. I'm not going to draw every single little piece of it because it will take way too much time. But so I left the bread and breakfast place at Molila for about an hour ago. I had found some alternate ways, roads to the big road between Morlilla and uh, Hulsfred. And then I got to it and it was just bloody awful. Uh, 100 kilometers per hour, no sides at all. You didn't want to be there with your bike. So now I'm improvising alternate routes on these gravel trails for basically the logging industry. I'm not sure I can get that all the way, but I'm hoping it seems pretty good. It becomes a bit longer going crisscross, but anything to avoid that bloody awful road. Never go out on those big roads. You will regret it. On the good side, no rain yet, and I'm not sure it will rain. <sighs> no one knows yet. There is a risk of rain all the day, but I'm going out of a zone, but that will be quite a few hours further on. 66 kilometers left to go. I haven't gone far because I'm going zigzagging on small roads, but I'm perfectly fine with that. There's a camping site waiting for me in Horn. So I'm down to riding on the hiking trail. Still better than that big bloody road. Uh, I'm glad my bike basically is a gravel bike with some stuff attached on to it to make it more suitable for too much time. But in the end, I came into Hulsfred without having to go on this road at all, which was great because that would have been awful even if it had just been for an hour. It was very heavy traffic and there were very, very small sites that you could escape the traffic on. You had to bike in the traffic, which I didn't want to do. The rest of the hike was 
pretty nice. It was much better roads, though this is somewhat largely traffic road, but it's not problematic. And I ended up in the end first in Vimmerby, where I had lunch, and then after yet some more reading in Hall. Now, this looks very long. In reality, it wasn't. It was about 70 kilometers. It just looks long because I have a different scale than I had different before showing you this. So, using Komoot to do this replanning is really valuable in order to get a much better ride. I do think I could cut quite a lot in this section as well, because I found another hiking trail that led me a better way. So this was a long and strange day. Um, I had to improvise a lot in the beginning. Dimmerby was a very, very touristy, gimmicky place. Everything was Astrid Lindgren something, and it's not Astrid Lindgren I knew as a kid. Now I'm out on small roads, and it's sunny and warm and nice. I think I have a car behind me, so I better stop. No, that was our place. <laughs> So, this is again some really, really nice landscape and the sun, and that's a small, narrow street, so not a lot of cars. Ah, lovely. So, this is Jurstala Church, um, a wooden church with a wooden clock tower placed on a hill with a gorgeous view over a large part of Småland. Um, it has some wonderful paintings inside. Uh, I will go inside and show you. So I stumbled upon this thing, a quite unusual wooden Swedish church in Jupdal, I think. I will check the name soon. There are some gorgeous paintings from uh, 1690s, uh, which has been uh, restored in the 20th century, uh, I could actually identify most of the pictures, thanks to my colleague who have taught me this. Oh, I'm supposed to be an art historian. So it's Tuesday the 27th of June. I've been out for six days, and today I am staying at Horn Camping or Hornbacken camping outside of uh, a small village of Horn in Östergötland. So I'm in my fourth county. Everything has gone fine. I got a very short shower, about 30 minutes at the end of today's bicycle trip, but it was sunny once again. Uh, when I looked at the weather yesterday, the weather forecast, it seemed like I would be hit by a severe amount of rain today. But uh, they missed it, totally. Erland got all of it, and that seems to have been very troublesome if I read the news. But I was home and dry. Um, tomorrow I go to another camping ground. Uh, one more uh, step towards Stockholm. Uh, then I will have been out for the first week of free on this tour. It's early morning in Horn. And today I will be riding to Valdemarsvik. That's a 90 kilometer ride. And as far as I know, I might be able to eat and buy some groceries on the way. Uh, it's going to be warm, but not as hot as the first day, so that's good. On the other side, I checked the height curve in my app. And there are parts of this ride that is going to be hard on my legs. So I just finished the first 20 kilometers on today's trip. Uh, the height difference were a lot easier than I thought. It was very slow and rolling hills. Just a nice bike ride. It might get different later. I found uh, out in the middle of nowhere um, on a road, there was this little uh, deck for someone to bathe from and probably anchor their boat at. 
So I decided to sit down and eat some chocolate. I'm not good at reading elevation profiles. I'm learning bit by bit. I thought this would be a excruciatingly difficult height at the end of today's trip. I got 30 kilometers left, so well, uh, that's a bit left still to go. Uh, it was long, but it wasn't all that steep. I guess I don't have a mental image of what 8% incline means. It was rideable on a low gear. <sighs> I do have to learn more about that. Anyway, it seems like I have the worst parts behind me. I had some wonderful coffee at uh, someone's home where they run their own coffee shop and stage for music, mostly singer-songwriters. Uh, nothing like that today, but that would be tomorrow. Uh, now I've got the last 30 kilometers and mostly downhill. And then it's time to set up camp again. So here I am in Valdemarsvik. It's a very small city, but they do care about football. There's some sort of event taking place tomorrow. So um, for a short while, it seemed like I couldn't camp here, but there was plenty of room for tents. Uh, no problem there. Um, you can see some of the campground behind me, and you can see a stage from the uh, park up here. Uh, it's warm. I ate pizza. Valdemar's Beak has got four restaurants. Every single one of them is a pizzeria, whatever they say <laughs> on Facebook. It's six o'clock in the morning. I woke up. I haven't slept all that well. Oh, slept enough, I hope. This was not only an expensive campground, it was also a very noisy one with cars and mopeds coming and going long into the night and people staying up and having parties. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but then there is not much else to choose from here but sleeping in the woods and perhaps I should have done that. I would have slept better. Anyway, I'm up and away. I'm glad to get an early start since this is going to be one long hot day. <laughs> So this is me riding out of Södersköpinge along Göta Kanal. A lovely view. I'm not sure I can film it properly. I'm making good time today. This works out as it should. I was tired, I didn't take any photos or videos. So I just boarded the car ferry or road ferry, which is without cost, it goes every half hour until 11 o'clock in the evening something. Um, lots of cars, just me on a bike.
Good morning. It's Friday, June the 30th. Uh, I got into the hotel at somewhere between 6 and 7 in the evening. So I rode all day yesterday. I began at 8 o'clock. Now, that included a long break in Söder Shopping. So that was planned. Uh, however, that was a ride that was somewhere between 120 and 130 kilometers. It was very hot, 27 degrees Celsius, and the sun was in my face all the time. So I did feel when I got to the hotel that this was probably my limit. I'm not sure I could have done that for very much longer. And it was especially the heat that got to me, not the physical exertion. Uh, this hotel, uh, Stora Hotel at Skandik in Nyköping, uh, has got no air conditioning. So I pay for a hotel, I do expect that. It's very hot outside and that was really hot. I don't mind that the room is very small, I ordered the smallest, cheapest room, but it was still 150 Swedish, uh, 1,500 Swedish kronor. So I did expect some level of comfort. Uh, as a roof slanted. Uh, the good thing about the room being small is that there is absolutely no room to place any horrible hotel room art. Now there was great air conditioning in the reception area and the restaurants and the lobby. And I'm soon going down to eat breakfast. So they know what air conditioning is. But when you came up to the hotel room, you saw these fans being put up all over the hallways leading to your rooms, and then you know that something fishy going on. That was not good. So I haven't slept all that good today either. Thankfully, it's a lot shorter ride. It's 60 kilometers to Trusa, where I booked a hostel. And the weather is not at all as hot. It's going to be around 20 degrees Celsius. And there is a risk of rain, though not a heavy downpour miles earlier. So I'm doing fine. After Trusa, it is Stockholm. Then I'm halfway through my trip and I got a resting day and I'm looking forward to that. But first, breakfast and some easy riding to Trusa. So this is Nyköping's Hus. I'm taking a small detour to do this as sightseeing. It's part of ancient Swedish history. If you want to know more about it, check out Nyköping's Gästabud at Wikipedia and you'll get the full, perhaps true, perhaps not true story about a king who let his nephew starve to death in a tower. And I think it might be that Slowly riding out of Nyköping on my way to Trusa. As you can see, I'm happy about the weather. Cloudy with a chance of easy rain. 20 degrees, lovely. And just 60 kilometers to ride. This will be great. So I got to Trusa early at about half past one. And I had to wait for an hour and a half for the hostel to open and let me in. No problem. Um, I need a relaxation. I'm just walking around the city thinking about where to eat tonight or if I'm buying something and bring back to the hostel. It's a very rudimentary hostel, hostel but not very expensive. Yeah. The city is cute. So it's 8.30 and I'm leaving Prusa, going into Stockholm. I think that at least 20 or 30 kilometers of today's 70 kilometers ride will be in urban areas as far as I can read the map. Uh, it will be an interesting change. Prusa in the early morning sun, as you can see, is very, very cute. This has been some sort of summer city for rich people from Stockholm for a very long time. And what you see in that side of the water is the villa city of uh, summer guests.
Let's see, that's another road this afternoon. So I'm about 30 kilometers from Stockholm and everything is quite agrarian yet, as you can see. A bit more car traffic, mm. not very bad still and it's small roads yet. I've stopped two times for extra breakfast or perhaps one extra breakfast and one lunch in cafes with a country theme. Slightly more fake than the real thing. I've stopped that earlier, but very nice. Uh, you can feel that you're getting closer to Stockholm, and this is an area where people go for day outings by car. So I arrived safely in Stockholm and I'm staying at Longholmen's Hostel, which is a former prison and they keep the prison theme intact all through the place, though every other cell has been converted to showers and toilets, so it's very comfortable. And of course you get your own key. But I could actually lock in my bike safely here in a prison, that's great. So this is Stockholm as idyllic as it gets, Longholmen, where I'm staying. If you want to stay there, book well in advance, it's very popular, although it's a large hostel. It's not very expensive, I think I paid 1600 for two nights, including bed linen, which is very, very reasonable. Uh, you have to pay extra for breakfast and such, of course, or you can cook your own meals. I could it's not all that easy to show what this room in Andra Hemet Longholmen looks like. I put on a slight fish island, so it looks probably a bit larger than it is. It is very small, but well planned. Uh, you've got Wi-Fi. They have turned one of the cells, every second cell, I said, into a bathroom and a shower. And I came here Saturday and they can't do laundry on Sundays. So I had to do laundry myself, since I bring everything I possibly could need to survive in the woods, camping. Of course I can do laundry and of course I can put up a clothesline. And unlike the prisoners, you've got windows that you can open. It's a two bedroom, but I've booked a room for myself. Everything around here is prison themed, including this uh, mirror. I'm not sure you can see it, which is kind of a morbid, oh, it does mean as well, morbid memento mori of the prison system, depicting a guillotine as some sort of visual Easter egg. Uh, I'm happy here. I'm going to have dinner at the restaurant nearby, that's who's it here. They seem to be Decently priced, at least. It's Sunday morning. Uh, I had plans for a bike ride around Stockholm. Looked again at my randomly chosen path that someone else had did and decided, no, I don't want to do this. So it's going to be a walk instead. That's <laughs> a change. Uh, I'll be walking around Stockholm, going to a few museums. I know that's an exhibition by Laurie Anderson at the Museum of Modern Art that I really wanted to see. I saw her in concert just a few days before I went away on this uh, bike trip. <laughs> Sorry. 
It's half past seven and I'm soon off to eat breakfast. I'm packing up all my stuff here in my room at the hostel at Longholmen and I've got a 90 kilometer ride to Nynes uh, and a, uh, a hostel that I booked there. Uh, I'm feeling that I might want to stay in Stockholm but I think that just as do I really want to go out in this weather? Um, I'm halfway. That's a hundred kilometers in front of me, uh, waiting for me before I get home, and I need to do them too. Usually, I feel that the road and um, going out in the countryside that's home, that's the easy and good place to be. Right now, it's just that slight hesitance to get going, and that has all to do with the weather. The weather is quite uh, unstable. That's going to be uh, showers. I might miss them. I might get hit by them. Uh, there is a more wind today than it's been before, and I will have it in my face all day. So, a long, hard ride, 90 kilometers. But first, a steady breakfast. So I'm about 20 kilometers from Stockholm. I'm soon outside of the city. I'm uh, just nearby Tumba will be the last suburb I'm passing by. I'm not sure if Tumba is a suburb or not. As you can see, it's raining. I'm having my not very stylish, but quite effective rain gear on. Uh, it's warm, at least when I'm moving. So it usually has to go off, but it's the kind that is easy to take on and off. I had a lovely piece of pie and some coffee in this cafe at what seems like a very large uh, building of a more upper class style, but it's actually what is known as 4-H garden here. So it's mostly for education of children. It's typical summer weather today. It rains and it is sunny and it rains again. Well, mostly rain, so the rain gear is great. I stayed here and had a waffle with cream and raspberry jam and some coffee and met a few other people who had been out cycling previously. They were not out cycling today, but closer to Stockholm I met a lot more people that actually do cycling for the holidays. Um, it's still raining. Uh, any feeling I had when I woke up that I wanted to stay indoors has gone away completely.
So this is Nunes Castle. I have no idea if it's open to the public or not. Most castles aren't. Uh, it's a gorgeous neoclassical castle. It might have been renovated to neoclassical or it might have been built as neoclassical. I have no idea about the history of this building. Um, it would have been very fun if the hostel was in the castle, but they never are. So just behind it is the Brennery and the distillery where I'm staying tonight. This is what Brennery looks like from the outside. It is situated very near a lake and there's a lot of nature around and if you turn around you see the backside of the neoclassical castle. So this is where we will be spending the night. It's a hostel by Swedish tourist organization STF. It's a distillery or former distillery behind Nynäs Castle and it's absolutely fabulous. They have done such a great job. So for being a hostel, this can be one of the nicest kitchens I ever seen. It's wonderful. And they've really gone all in in getting that uh, 16th century look of it, though very, very modern still. There's a lake outside of the windows. And here's a general assembly room for everyone who stays here with a piano. I have no idea if that is tuned. I can't play anything. But just have a look at this. If you have a chance, stay at Brenneriet. I will probably put up links in the description of this movie of wherever I have stayed because this was better than expected. And it costs like a youth, youth hostel. It's not very expensive at all. So here I am in Nunes at Brenneriet and I was looking over my plans and how to get to Gothenburg. Um, I had been planning this by this idea of following Sverige Leden as much as I could. And the accommodations were not good. Uh, so I looked at the map and I rerouted myself. Uh, so I'm going to Katrineholm tomorrow and then it's Askersund. I've got a hostel booked in Katrineholm. In Askersund, I will stay at a camping ground and then I go from Askersund to Skövde, which is a very long bike ride, almost uh, 120 kilometers again. I hope the weather will allow that. And that was planned from the very beginning. Uh, then I was supposed to go to Vara, which was a very small city, and that might be a hostel or that might not be a hostel at a school. I sent off an email asking about it. Um, if they reply, I have to tell them I'm no longer interested because after VAR I would have to camp out in the woods. And that would be okay. The only problem with this was that it became very long. And I managed to find a way to make this a lot shorter. I hope the roads won't be horrible now. So instead of going to Vara from, from Skövde, I'm going to Falköping. Um, it's not a long ride at all. It is less than 50 kilometers. I think it's 45 kilometers. Though there is some um, decent height differences. I think I'm going up over a hill and back on the other side. And, well. Let's see if I can do that. It's not long. So from Falköping, I'm going to Allingsås and from Allingsås to Gothenburg and to my brother. So suddenly I'm going to see Falköping and Allingsås. I've booked uh, hostels in both places. I'm getting a bit lazy. I feel throwing money not to have to camp in the forest. And but it's my holiday, so that is perfectly okay. I am so glad that it is so easy to replan in Komoot and that it's so easy to book online and get an answer very fast that you have booked. That's great.
So it's Tuesday, 4th of July, uh, a quarter to nine in the morning, and I'm off to Katrina Holm. It's a 90 kilometers ride, so today to Katrina Holm, and tomorrow to Askersund, and then on from Askersund to Skövde are some pretty long bike rides, all of them. So I hope the weather keeps as it is today, around 15 degrees Celsius, sunny, no rain. Well, it will rain here in the Nunes uh, in the evening, but then I'll be gone from here and hopefully I'll be at the hostel in Katrine Holm. Uh, I will have the wind in my face all day, so this will not be a super fast ride. Well, nothing I do is super fast anyway, so uh, I hope it will be as nice as it was yesterday. So I'm here at Stora Jule. It's uh, Wednesday, the 5th of July. Uh, I'm just outside of Katrine Holm. Uh, couldn't find a bicycle repair shop that was uh, able to fix my broken spoke yesterday. Perhaps I'll find one in Askesund, but I have no big hopes about that. Um, they're just lazy in my mind. My regular mechanic at my regular bike shop does that in five to ten minutes. It's not a big thing. Uh, but they didn't want to do it and I couldn't force anyone to do anything. And a broken spoke is nothing I can fix myself on the go. So I have to go with a slightly slanted back wheel on my bike. I think that will be okay. Uh, today I'm riding uh, slightly more than a hundred kilometers to Askersund. It's great weather, no real threat of rain, much less wind than yesterday. It's supposed to be sunny, though not that warm, so a perfect day. Seems like I'm going on a lot of gravel road now. Not this gravel road, because I'm in the garden at the mansion at Stora Jure, which is part of the area where I'm staying at a hostel in the other direction. I think it would be a great day. I suggest to eat breakfast at the hostel, and then I found out they serve breakfast at nine o'clock. So I usually want breakfast at half past seven so I can get a good start. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm not supposed to stress on this holiday. So if I get to ask soon before six o'clock, I can pick up some uh, medicine I need, uh, which need to be in cold storage. So I had to order it to a uh, pharmacy there. And if I'm there after six o'clock, then I have to pick it up tomorrow morning. No biggie, I can do either. Today's ride contained quite a lot of gravel. So this is what the good gravel roads look like. Uh, but there were some of them really, really worn out and bad. So I'm glad my bike is nominally a gravel bike. Somewhat fatter tires, no need to have a super high uh, pressure in them. They're quite soft and it has a low waypoint. This was a really dull camping ground and I had to pay for an expensive place with electricity because they were full.
I just got out of Askersund. I'm a few kilometers outside. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. I got out of Askersund about a quarter to 10. And that's because the very nice bike mechanic could fix my bike. So my back wheel is totally okay again. And it was not very expensive. Uh, glad about that. I've got 110 kilometers to ride to Fevde. But I'm in no hurry. I know there's a few restaurants and cafes along the way. Uh, the hostel in Schwefde is unmanned, so I've already gotten codes to get in and to get my key, so I can take my time. This will be a relaxing ride, though it will start rain in the afternoon, probably. You can't get it all. So I'm passing through Tiveren, a large forest here outside of Askersund. It's also a national park in bits and pieces. So I'm just pedaling on. The road hasn't gotten any better, though I do like the forest around here. The weather is typical Swedish summer weather. One minute it pours down rain and the next the sun is out and it gets hot. This was a long, cold and rainy day. It was. It began as typical Swedish summer weather. It was sunny and then it rained a little and then it was sunny and then it rained a little. And then it just rained and rained and rained. It never went above 15 degrees Celsius, rather 13 degrees or something like that. So pretty cold. So I'm on my way leaving Schwevde towards Falsherping. It will be a short ride, just 40 kilometers. The sun is up again, though everything is wet. This turned out to be a pretty beautiful piece of train. Cut through the rocks. Must be old railroad when it looks like this. Straight and cut through the stone. So you can see the stone facing on either side. It's windy, but it's warm again and it's dry. So I think this will be good. which is a lake where people come in droves in early spring to watch the crane stops. Now it's not so much of an attraction, though it's a very nice place. They built a lot of pathways, uh, an information center that you see behind me. Well, yesterday was rainy, cold, boring, not really miserable, but hard. Uh, but that is all forgotten. It only takes about 30 minutes on roads like this uh, to remember why I'm doing this. This me stopping for another unexpected uh, tourist attraction, perhaps. Uh, this is a field with a lot of graves. Uh, the oldest one is more than 5,000 years old, and it was used up until uh, 1,000 in the common era. So it's an unusual place. I've read in the plaques here that there are so many graves in so varied styles. So then when fir forests gets a bit old or they are not so heavily planted, they too get pretty nice.
It's a wonderful day. So I'm leaving for shopping to Arling Source. I'm ready to go. The sun is up. It's 20 minutes to nine. It's Saturday. And I've got about 85 kilometers to go. It's going to be a great day. So these two days from Trevida to Farshöping, from Farshöping to Arlingsås, were not part of my original plan. Uh, when I sat at my computer planning this back many months ago, uh, I didn't find a really good solution for this part of the trip. So I've taken a slight detour. Uh, there is a straighter road behind me, but with more traffic. But I found out that I could do it on these compact gravel roads instead. Uh, out in the forest, it's regular planted fir forest but it's a lot nicer to be out of the traffic. It's worth the extra kilometers. So this place is called Lilliputland. It's built by a woman living out here in the forest. She has built every single house herself. Uh, she uh, decorates for Christmas um, in the winter. It's fantastic. It's a true roadside attraction. I never would have stumbled upon this without going slowly by bike. I absolutely love this. So I left Allingsås pretty late, mostly because I had a two-hour breakfast. The host at Lilla Hotellet was a very nice woman, and she did a great breakfast. But there was also an American who was very nice and very fun to talk with, who sat at my table and we chatted away for way longer than I usually take at breakfast. That was a very nice break. One of the great joys of this trip is meeting people and talking to them, and I've met a lot of people. Uh, the trip into Gothenburg is somewhat less than 60 kilometers, 58 or 57 or something like that. Uh, about 10 of them on uh, big roads. I've just done that bit. It was boring and straight and some traffic, though not so much this early. It's about half past 10 right now. Uh, it's a sunny day. And the rest of the journey is supposed to be on bike roads. 40 kilometers bike roads. That's very, very nice.
So I've just left Gothenburg about an hour ago after a nice evening and a good night's sleep at my brother's place, meeting him and his wife and their daughter. I'm going to Farbank today, that's about 100 kilometers. 60 of those are on cycle paths, um, so that's nice. It's no real climbs because I'm going close to the coastline. Uh, I have the wind in my face, but it's not a very strong wind. It's warm, but there will be rain. And there will be rain all the way back to Malmö. I do feel I'm at the end of this trip, although that's actually four days of biking left, three nights out. Uh, still, it feels I'm the finishing part of it. That's just mental. It's strange. Uh, this is an extremely beautiful path to bike, and there's lots and lots of bike tourists, even on an overcast day like this. So I'm looking forward to a nice day of riding again. Just had a second breakfast in Kungsbacka at a cafe. It has a big, awkward square here with a very ugly sculpture. The rest of the town center looks nice. It's not really raining, it's just drizzle. Um, but I keep my rain jacket on. Schuleholm Castle was built in 1904. It's heavily decorated, it is wonderful, and they do have accommodations if you want to, though it's not cheap. If you're out for a multi week trip, this will happen too. Rain and long, boring streets. Um, it ain't too bad. I've got my rain jacket. I've got rain pants as well, but not yet. <laughs> uh, it's warm. I'm not freezing. It's 50 kilometers and a little bit more till I can set up my tent in the rain. Yet another morning. I am on my way from this camping site just outside of Warburg to Halmstad. That would be approximately 80 kilometers. And the weather looks a lot better today. So I will see a great part of Kattegat Leden, the west coast here in Sweden. In, well, not completely sunny, slightly overcast but unrainy weather. I'm looking very much forward to that. And tonight there's a hostel waiting for me. On July 12th I left Halmstad, going to Vebystrand by way of Melbystrand and Åstad. As you can see it was a very rainy day, uh, but I had a nice big breakfast at the hostel and I just hung out at the hostel for 
an hour and a half, almost two hours, just waiting for the absolute worst of this rain to uh, go away. And it did. It's a very rainy day, I will show you. Um, so I'm having a rest under a roof, uh, an outdoor recreation area. So these are toilets and there's this small sitting area outside of them. Um, just waiting for the worst of the rain to come. This was a fun part of Kattegat Leden, although not as fun in rain, but I can see it would be very, very nice to do in better weather. It was not bad this time either, though when the rain poured down at its worst, I had a very hard time seeing anything because my glasses get all covered in rain and visibility is low, and it's in this nature path, paths, so I had to go really, really slow. So this is the last campsite uh, preparing for the last night on this trip. Hanging up a bit of my rain clothes to dry, not doing any laundry because I'll be home tomorrow. Uh, the bike is dirty, it needs cleaning up. The tent is still very, very good. I'm 
got everything ready for an early evening. This campsite is gorgeous. I love it very much. I've been here about a year ago. There's one other family, or two guys with a lot of kids, three I think, uh, with a tent in the other part of it. Here's place for at least 15 more tents before it starts to feel crowded. And if one would like to have, not have a tent, there is a shelter, of one of those three-sided open ones, a lot of uh, firewood, and a place to light, light a fire, and a table for that. And then there is this uh, bunker from, I believe, the Second World War. It looks like part of a Per Albin Hansen line. Uh, this one is decommissioned since a long time ago and someone has broken into it. So it's open and it is disgusting. So I will not walk into it. It's just a small room with slits for windows straight out into nothing. Uh, but the place in itself and the campground, that is absolutely fantastic. So we've got the sea. I'm standing on top of the bunker now. We've got a field. That's the way I'm heading tomorrow. There's a water pump. It doesn't work because there's too little water in the ground at the moment. Although it's raining, there's, you see, perhaps my camp. And there's a second shelter. I love this. This has been a fantastic trip. It was way easier to do the biking than I ever believed it would be. And it was a lot of fun. Even when it rained, it was fun. Though I did wish for it to stop rain on a couple of occasions. Tomorrow it's 110 kilometers home and like 80% of that road or 90 I've done before. So it's very, very easy. Uh, and so it's seven o'clock on July 13th. I just woke up here in Kritra. I've got 110 kilometers home and tonight I'll be in my own bed again. And I'll start cleaning up all my gear. Not big business. There's rain, a few small showers during the day. There is no way of raining them. But I can take that. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> This has been a great trip. I'm looking forward to the last part, although I have seen it before. Så jag 
So this is it, uh, over the bay, behind me, or rather in front of me because I'm standing quite awkward, awkwardly turned around, is Malmö. Nine kilometers left home and a road I know very well. The, the sun is back, it has been sunny and rainy again and again and again today. I'm gonna celebrate with a few friends when I'm home. I'd probably film somewhere. So I did it. I'm back home again. My bike is with me. And everything is great. <laughs> 2000 kilometers Malmö to Stockholm, to Gothenburg, and back to Malmö. It was a lot easier than I actually thought it would be. I thought there would be hardships one day or another. It was just rain. And rain, you can always cope with. That's it.